What's going on, everybody? It's a YouTube troll, aka Papa Birdo. And um, I want to talk about the new Nod Storm 4 trailer that came out. And at first, I wanted to do a breakdown video of it, but I don't find myself particular enough to do it. So I'm stuck just doing my opinions on it, okay? So the first thing is the graphics, okay? You guys already noticed the graphics because a lot of you guys, you know, really, really care about it. Uh, me personally, I would prefer functionality over graphics. Like, you know, for example, having a good frame rate over having really good graphics but shitty frame rate but you know with storm 4 you don't have to choose between the two you get both of them so that's fucking awesome i started thinking about the ultimates the awakenings the story mode you know specifically the cutscenes and the boss battles i mean if you guys seen that madara versus hashirama gameplay where the nine tails has the susano armor and susano armor is breaking there's a lot of fucking detail into that and, and that's just gonna be eye candy when you play on story mode and of course, it's gonna lead on to free battle. That, that's gonna go on free battle and online and stuff. Especially with, you know, the combos. Because you guys know, at the end of every combo, it's like a cinematic, you know, uh, almost aspect of, you know, the fighting, right? Because Storm storm games are known for being cinematic. And I, I love that. I, I just love the fact that, you know, they're going all out. And um, they're abandoning the, the last-gen consoles. And then just using all the sources of the new consoles to make this game. Okay, so let's go to the next uh, next topic would be the battle damage. That, that's the second thing I noticed in the game. It was the battle damage because Madara had like, I would say, either dirt or blood. He, he was like kind of, you could tell he was roughed up, right? And then Sakura's armor breaks. It's, it's more like her flak jacket breaks and then one of her leaves gets fucked up. And I really like that, alright? At the same time, I didn't care too much about it. I'll tell you why, okay? Just like the graphical aspect of the game, it's just something nice to look at, okay? But at the same time, I like it because it, it makes the, the fighting look more dynamic, okay? It actually feels more dynamic in the sense of I'm actually inflicting damage to this person, right? That, that's what it lets you know. I'm actually inflicting damage. Although, even if even if the, that feature wasn't there, you would still know you were doing damage because of health bars. But, you know, it's just something nice to look at, alright? And you can always appreciate that. Like I said before, Storm games are known for being cinematic, so... I'm assuming that they went with this feature just for that sake, alright? So now, for the next thing, uh, it would be the Team Leader Switch. Uh, for those of you guys that have seen already the explanation about what Team Leader is... The Team Leader Switch, basically, you do a combo, and then you can seamlessly switch to another character and then continue the combo. And if I had to compare it to any other game, it would be Marvel's Cap. Because on every other fighting game, you kind of have to, you know, to give you an example, okay? Like on Street Fighter X Tekken, you have to be standing perfectly still, right? And then you can switch. Or you have to do a combo and switch. But, but on Naruto, it's, it's like, I mean, I'm not comparing the games, okay? I'm just saying, like, the mechanic itself. Uh, I'm comparing the mechanics so that you guys can get an idea of what I'm talking about. So, in, in Not Storm 4, on this trailer, you know, it was seamless. It was like a seamless transition. It didn't feel like a switch, but rather like a tag team up, you know? That's what I loved about it. Because it doesn't feel like you're just switching characters and going to another one. It, it, it's just something that you really just take advantage of both characters at the same time. That's what I feel like it was. And, uh, of course, a lot of you guys might enjoy this because you missed the relay from Storm 3. Right? On Storm 3, you could hold down Circle or B if you're on s bot, And you can basically bump into your opponent and then call out your support character. And they would do like a little combo for you and, and kind of set you up for you to do more damage. And I love that. I love that. But in this game, it feels like it, it plays a more important role than what it did in Storm 3. And I honestly can't wait to play this game, man. I really can't. Now, for the next thing, Peggy 12. it's the Awakening stage. Um, I'm going to tell you guys a pro and a con, okay? And the con isn't so bad. But the pro of... The awakening stage not being there and i don't know if they're gonna add it back but please don't please don't the reason why i don't want them to add it back is because if you guys know in revolution when people use the giant awakenings there's not a lot of room for you to like back up and evade the motherfucker you know what i'm saying so if they keep the stage the same way it is and if you're playing on a big map you're gonna have more room to move away from that awakening and to actually be able to survive most of the time so, for example, look at Mecha Kurama, right? 
when he awakens, you get sent to that small ass stage, and you're basically at the mercy of the dude that awakens. You're not really, you know, at the, your own mercy. You're not able to really maneuver as much. All right. And I wanted to call to go back to the old stages, and I want them to keep the awakening stage only for the really huge ones, like the you know the perfect Susano for Madara, because he's too big, right? Like if if you you kept it on the same map. You would still be at the same situation, so you might as well add on that that the new stage, right? So I'm going back and forth, right? I first said that I don't want him to add it back, all right? But then I'm saying, okay, add it back for the really huge awakenings like the Ten Tails and the Perfect Son of Madara and, and the Hashirama, because those awakenings are even bigger than life. You know what I'm saying? So, and another thing that adds on to that stage is, of course, like I said before, with the other uh, features. It, it adds on to the like the cinematic feel of it, right? It adds atmosphere to the Awakenings, right? So when you get sent to this uh, stage, it adds the atmosphere of holy shit, this motherfucker is about to fuck me up, you know? Uh, I mean, I don't know if you guys get that same sense when you see that stage, but that's what I feel like they were going for. Because, again, Sabakuna 2 goes for the cinematics more, more than anything, okay? So now, let's see what's the last thing I noticed. Um... Okay, new ultimate jutsus for Naruto and Sasuke, obviously. And I also noticed the ultimate jutsu for Jubito, but you know uh, that's obvious because it's a new character overall. Now, they on every Naruto Storm game they always do this. They always update the, the you know the move set for both Naruto and Sasuke, and the other characters kind of left out. Now this isn't you know this little part I'm about to say has nothing to do with the trailer, but. I really hope Cyberpunk 2 at least upgraded the moveset for the very, the, the very oldest characters that have been in the Storm games. So you know Itachi, the Sanin, you know so on and so forth. I really hope they actually uh, update uh, all of that stuff. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys thought of it. I know I kind of you know went back and forth with my words a little bit, but I really hope you guys got the gist of what I was talking about. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. I'm out. Peace.